And once you arrive, just settle in, perhaps taking a nice deep inhalation, maybe the biggest that you've taken all day, in through your nose, out through your mouth, as you allow your body to just completely rest and relax on your mat, feeling the support of the earth, just letting go of what came before this moment and what will come after. I'm going to ring my bowl just once, just to signal the beginning of our class. So letting go of any cares or concerns or worries you may have, leaving them in an imaginary basket outside your door. They'll be there for you if you want to get them after class, or maybe you'll just let them lie there, just leaving those burdens that no longer serve you. And as you rest on your mat, just noticing the temperature in, your, in the air, in the room, noticing the sounds that you hear, noticing the body. So feeling where the body meets the mat, just making note of that as you notice. Noticing how your body feels as you begin. So perhaps scanning your body from head to toe quickly and just noticing, making note And then as you're ready, turning your attention to your breath, just watching the gentle rise and fall of your chest and belly or counting on your inhales and exhales, perhaps making your exhales be a little bit longer, relaxing on each exhale. So being with the breath for a little bit here. If the breath, I mean, if the mind starts to wander away from the breath, just noticing, noticing and acknowledging the thoughts, allowing the thoughts to be there without judgment, and then returning your attention again back to your breath. The gentle inhale and exhale. So our focus today is going to be on opening the hips. And so the hips are said to carry emotion or store emotion. And so when we are able to open our hips or bring space, we can release some of that stored emotion. Um, opening hips also helps our back to, to strengthen our back and to 
release any tightness in the back. And opening our hips sometimes uh, creates energy in the body. Sometimes we just get stuck with tension and tightness in the hips. So we'll just see what we can do today to make ourselves feel that much better throughout our entire body, but a little focus on the hips. So we're going to begin by floating our arms up overhead, stretching out through our fingertips and down through our body, out through our toes. Just creating space. Just lengthening out, even walking the shoulders, alternating them up towards the ears as if you're reaching with one hand and then reaching with the other hand and then pointing through the toes. And then inhaling and lifting the left leg up as you point through your toes, replacing the left leg down. Inhaling, lifting the right leg up, up pointing through the toes, replacing that leg down. Inhaling, lifting and stretching through the left fingertips, really lengthening and allowing the rest of the body to be relaxed. Just really stretch out through the left fingertips through the left arm, feel the stretch in the side of the body. Replace the left arm and then inhale and stretch out through the right fingertips, really lengthening and stretching and allowing the rest of the body to be relaxed. Replacing that arm. And now we're going to lift the left arm and the right leg and stretch out through the left fingertips and the right toes. Allow the opposite arm and leg to be relaxed. Replace that arm and leg down and then lifting the right arm and the left leg, stretching through the fingertips, down through the toes, allowing the opposite arm and leg to be relaxed. Replace that arm and leg down, and then stretch out through both hands, through, out through your fingertips. As you inhale, exhale, relax, and then float the arms down, lift the hips slightly off the mat, and bring your hands underneath your sacrum, and then engage your core, and lift your legs off the mat, both legs off the mat. Squeeze your glutes, squeeze your abs, and then replace your feet on the mat. Lift your hips and take your hands out. Now bending your legs, placing the soles of your feet on the mat, just gently windshield wiper your knees from side to side, moving with ease, using your breath. You can use that ujjayi breath if you'd like, or just your regular breath. And check in with your facial muscles, your neck and shoulders, your arms and hands, and just notice if you're holding any tension and allow yourself to release and relax. So perhaps gently parting your lips to allow your jaw to release. Just even wiggling your fingers to see that your hands are relaxed. And when you come to center with the knees, you can even lift the shoulders off the mat slightly and replace them back down on the mat and feel the weight of the shoulders relaxed. And then continue with your moving your knees from one side to center to the other side. Just a gentle rocking motion, seeing yourself doing the movement, noticing that your face is relaxed, 
that you're not gripping or holding any place. And the next time you bring your knees to center, take the left ankle on top of the right thigh. And then we're going to take the left hand to the left knee and gently press that left knee away. So our head is just resting on the mat and we're pressing gently. We're not bringing any undue tension to ourselves, but just pressing the knee away and just keep the breath flowing. And then release and bring the left foot to the mat, cross the right ankle on the left thigh. Take the right hand, press the knee away. So just opening up the hips, that right hip in a gentle way, pressing the knee away from us. Keep the breath flowing. And then release, uncross that ankle. And we'll take the left ankle on the right thigh again. And this time we'll bring the head and shoulders up and we'll clasp behind the right thigh as we draw the thigh towards us. And the head can stay up or if you'd like to replace your head on the mat, you could do that. So we're focused on opening the left hip up a little bit. Use your exhalations to draw the, the right knee in towards you. And then release as you're ready, uncrossing that ankle. Cross the right ankle on the left thigh. And then do whatever you did on the opposite side. So if you lifted head and shoulders up, do the same here. So we keep a balance in the body and just draw that left thigh in on the exhalations. Notice if one hip is tighter than the other and just notice it without judgment. And when you're, and you can uncross that ankle, the right ankle, bring it back, bring the foot back to the mat. And when you're doing poses like that, just notice if you're resisting, if you're holding tension and not allowing the body to release. You know, sometimes we get so used to holding the tension that we don't even notice that we're doing it. So just be aware. And now we'll bring the hands, we'll lift the hips and bring the hands under the sacrum, which is the lower back. We'll bring the knees in towards the chest and then send the feet, the soles of the feet up towards the sky. And we'll inhale. And as we exhale, we'll bring the feet wide and then inhale and bring the feet out a little bit further. Inhale and as you exhale, bring the feet out a little bit further. Notice if you're gripping or holding. So we're just allowing gravity to widen the V of our legs. And then engage the core and bring the feet together at the top. So you're almost looking up at your feet and we'll do that again. So inhale and as you exhale, bring the feet out, maybe a couple of, a couple of feet apart, engaging the core. Inhale and as you exhale, bring the feet a little wider. Inhale and as you exhale, bring the feet out wider still. Just stretching the inner thighs engaging the core 
and then inhale the feet back to center. And then we're going to scissor, scissor the legs. So engage your core. So remember, bring the belly button in and up and then scissor your feet from side to side. And you can keep them up at the top or you can slowly lower them as you scissor. A little more challenging as you lower. And then bring them back up to the top and just continue for a couple of rounds here. Go as slowly as you'd like. And then the next time you bring your feet up to the top, drop one foot down towards the earth, bring it up and drop the other foot down towards the earth. Use your breath. Inhaling up and exhaling the leg down. You probably feel this. <laughs> I do. And then you can bring your knees into your chest as you're ready. Take your hands out from underneath your bottom and rock your knees from side to side. And then we'll reach for either side of our feet, like the outside edge of our feet to come to happy baby. If it's comfortable and if it's not comfortable, you can just do one side at a time. So happy baby, we bring our knees wide towards our armpits and hold on to the outer edge of each foot. And you can rock a little bit in happy baby just to massage your back. And if it's not comfortable, of course, don't do the pose, but bring the feet, the soles of the feet together and come to Supta Baddha Konasana, where the knees are out wide. And as you're ready, if you're in happy baby, release your feet and now come into Supta Konasana or bound angle. So we bring the soles of the feet together and we take a nice deep inhalation and exhalation. Perhaps closing your eyes for a moment and just breathe. Now bring your hands to the outer part of your thighs, closing your knees like a book. And we'll turn to our side and push ourselves up or bring our knees into the air, cross at our ankles and rock ourselves up, holding on to the back of our thighs. And find a blanket to sit on the edge of the blanket, if you'd like. Make yourself comfortable in Sukhasana. So we'll sit up nice and tall, placing our hands on our kneecaps and just come into some nice, easy head rolls. So chin to chest and just gently rolling the head.
such an easy thing to do, but helps relieve tension in our neck and shoulders. And we always do this mindfully, just noticing. And then reversing your direction as you're ready. And once you have gone around three or four times in each direction, you can bring your head to the center as you're ready. And then inhaling and looking out over the right shoulder. Coming to center, inhaling and exhaling, looking out over the left shoulder. Coming to center, inhaling, looking up. Exhaling, looking down. Coming back to center, tipping the right ear towards the right shoulder. Inhaling to center. Exhale, left ear towards left shoulder. Coming to center. Rolling your shoulders up and back couple of times and then reversing the direction and then bringing the legs out wide in a V shape and then we'll actually take the left foot and bring the instep the left foot to the right inner thigh and then we're going to turn our torso towards that right knee. Inhale our arms up, really stretching through the fingertips and then leading with the chin and the chest as we come forward, folding at the hip creases. And just coming down as far as is comfortable without, without forcing. And just taking a few breaths here seeing if you can allow your body to release. send the left leg out long and bring the right instep towards the left inner thigh and then we'll sit up nice and tall turn our torso towards that left leg and then inhale the arms up exhale as we fold forward leading with our chin leading with our chest folding at our hip creases And just take a few rounds of breath here. <sighs> Notice if you're holding or gripping. And just allow your body to release. And then inhale back up 
and we'll bring the soles of our feet together, interlacing our fingers, our hands, and place our hands on top of our toes. And then we'll just sit up nice and tall in bound angle or Baddha Konasana. So nice tall spine. Now bringing yourself to Sukhasana or easy pose. So we're going to do a pose we haven't done before and it's called rock the baby. So we'll take our right foot in our left hand. We'll bring the crook of our right elbow around our right knee and then we'll rock our knee from side to side. <laughs> it's kind of a funny one. So just picture holding a baby. And you don't have to do a big movement here, but just a little rocking motion. And try not to be doing this if you're uncomfortable. You don't want to have a lot of tension in your body. Just relax and rock the baby. And then release, place that foot back on the mat. And we'll take the other foot. So take the left foot with the right hand, left elbow, and then rock the baby. <laughs> Keep the breath flowing. And then as you're ready, replace that foot. Then we'll come into bound angle again. Just sit up nice and tall. And you can flutter the knees very gently if you'd like. And then we're going to send the legs out in front of us and just bounce the knees a little bit. Flex the feet, sit up nice and tall as you press into the mat on either side of your hips for Dandasana or stick pose. Take a nice deep inhalation, a nice exhalation, relax your shoulders. Legs are pressing into the mat. Do that again. Take a nice deep inhalation as you extend through your crown. Press into the mat with your hands and the back of your legs. And then we're going to inhale our arms up and fold forward, folding from the hip creases, leading with our chin and our chest again. Just stretching out that, those back muscles a little bit. Noticing your hip creases. That's where we fold from. And we don't need to come down extra far. Just listen to your own body. Think about leading with your chest. So sending your chest or your heart center forward. And then we'll inhale up and we're going to make our way to table. And you can have your blanket under your knees if you'd like. And then our hands are right under our shoulders and our knees are right under our hip points. And we'll come into a nice easy cat cow so dropping the belly inhaling looking forward exhaling rounding the back and just come into your own cat cow just noticing the flexibility of the spine using your breath to move with ease
really pushing away from the mat when you come into your cat. Really sending the heart center forward when you come into your cow. And the next time you come to a neutral table, come to stillness. And then we'll inhale and we're going to send the hip out towards the right as we look back at the right hip. Come back to center, inhale, and as you exhale, send the left hip out towards the left and look back. And we'll do that one more time. So inhale, look back at the right hip as you send the hip out towards the side. Come back to center. Inhale, and as you exhale, send the left hip out towards the left and look back and come back to center. We're going to bring our left foot forward between our hands as we walk the knee back. And we'll come into a low lunge here. So just sink into that left hip. You can keep your fingertips down on the mat if you'd like, or or if you'd like to bring them up into Anjali Mudra, you can do that. I'm going to I'm going to keep my fingertips down today. So just sinking into that left hip. And then we're going to shift back and straighten the left leg as we come onto the left heel. And we're just bending forward towards that left knee. Take a breath or two here. And then we're going to shift forward again into low lunge. We're going to heel toe our foot, our left foot towards the edge of the mat as we bring our left hand to the instep side of the left foot. So both hands are on the instep side of that left foot for lizard. So we sink again into that left hip. So opening up that left hip a little more. This is a deep stretch, but it really serves to open up the hip, hip joint, hip flexor. But if it feels uncomfortable, of course, back off and don't go as deep. And then we'll walk our hands back towards us as we straighten the left leg. Come on to the left heel for runner's stretch. Just bending towards that left knee. And then we'll take that left foot behind us and we'll bring the right foot in between the hands walk that left knee back and sink into that right hip this time. So fingertips can be down on the mat or in Anjali Mudra. And then we'll walk our hands back towards us as we straighten the right leg coming on the right heel for the runner's stretch. So just leaning towards that right knee. And then we'll come forward onto that foot again and we'll heel toe that right foot towards the edge of the mat as we bring the right hand on the instep side. So both hands are on the instep side of the right foot. And we'll just sink into that right hip for lizard. A deep hip opener.
And I mentioned, you know, if you want to bring the floor closer, you could use a block here under your hands. You could even fold a blanket and put it under your hands just to bring the floor up a little bit. And then we'll walk our hands back towards us as we straighten the right leg, coming up onto the right heel, a little stretch, the back of the leg. And then we'll gracefully, as best you can, bring that right foot behind you and bring your hands down to the mat, spreading your fingers. Notice if you'd like to have your index finger pointing forward or if you want to try having your middle finger pointing forward. We'll come into our down dog. So curling your toes under, sending your hips up towards the sky. We'll walk the dog alternate bending your knees and you can bend them quite generously and really move the hips and as you're ready come onto your toes and then settle back towards your heels And you can always come down to your knees if you're fatigued in any way. But eventually, down dog becomes a resting pose. And it's very good for building strength in our arms and our shoulders, stretching our hamstrings, stretching our hips, lower back. It's weight bearing. Inhale, and then we're going to come down to our knees. And we're going to come to standing, but if you'd like, um, you can walk your hands towards your knees and come up onto your toes. Um, I know some of you may need a blanket underneath your heels. Um, so if you think you'll need a blanket, come back to your knees, get a blanket. And then we're going to um, come to our toes again. And we're going to come to Malasana. So some people like to have a blanket under their toes. So you rest your, I mean, under your heels. So you rest your heels on the blanket and press your elbows into your knees. And if this is something that, you know, you'd rather not do, just make your way to Tadasana. But this is a nice hip opener and this can also be a resting pose if you practice it a little bit. So we're pressing our elbows into our knees to open the knees. And if you're in Tadasana, just rock from side to side. Find your Tadasana, so find the earth underneath your feet. And if you're in Malasana, use the strength of your legs to come up. I guess I'll have to move my computer a little bit. So let's all just come into our Tadasana. And then we're going to interlace our fingers behind us, our hands behind us, as we spread our knee, uh, spread our feet out wide, wide-legged stance, squeeze the shoulder blades together as you fold forward, leading with your chin and your chest and your heart center, bringing the crown of the head towards the earth as your arms come off your back.
and then slowly rotate the torso up as the arms come back down. And then we're going to heel toe our feet together. And I guess we'll come down to our mats. So inhale the arms up, turn the palms away, have a slight bend in the knees as you float forward. And then once you have your forward fold, just hold on to either elbow, opposite elbows, and hang in ragdoll. And your knees can be bent quite a lot here, resting your chest on your thighs. And then just swing from side to side, releasing your lower back, releasing the vertebrae in your back. And then coming to stillness in the center, shaking your head yes, shaking your head no. Placing your hands on either side of your feet as you make your way down to your back. Taking your time. And once you arrive on your back, bringing your knees into your chest, hugging them into your chest, and then placing your hands on your kneecaps, spreading your knees apart. And just use the weight of your hands to help your knees to open. And inhale your knees to center and exhale your knees wide. Inhale your knees to center. Exhale your knees wide. And if you'd like to come into happy baby before you come to your Shavasana, you can reach for the outer edge of each foot. Bring your knees towards your armpits. Rock a little bit from side to side. And since this is happy baby, bring a smile to your face. Imagine yourself being a baby in your crib. And as you're ready, you can release your feet, send your legs out long, and come to a comfortable Shavasana. So your legs spread wide so that the toes are pointing towards the edges of your mat. Your arms are out wide, palms facing up. You're taking a nice deep inhalation through your nose and out through your nose as you allow yourself to release, relax, knowing that you have nurtured body, mind, and spirit. Put yourself on the path to having a relaxing, centered day, grounded in your body and comfortable. I'm going to ring my bowl now.
I invite you to bring your hands to Anjali Mudra, bringing your thumbs to your third eye, the space between your eyes. May you think kind thoughts, bring your thumbs to your lips. May you say kind words, bring your thumbs to your heart center. May you feel peace, love, and kindness towards all beings as you move through the rest of your day and beyond. Namaste.